Shame, shame, shame. We'll talk about that today on Bible Time. Hello again, everyone. Thank you for joining me for Bible Time. So I've got something for you today. Um, the Lord led me to Zephaniah chapter 3. Well, first of all, before I even begin that, what do I mean when I say the Lord led me? Boy, we could do a whole long series on that one, couldn't we? How we hear from God. I simply sat down and I said, Lord, I need to record Bible time. I said, can you give me something? I opened up my Bible and I just am scrolling through and I feel like the Lord saying, stop. And I look and it's Zephaniah. Was I wrong? You know, did I, should I have stopped on Hosea? Should I have stopped on Zechariah, Haggai, you know, all within the vicinity? But I chose Zephaniah. I, I go by faith that that's where the Lord led me. So anyway, Zephaniah chapter 3. By the way, did you know Zephaniah was a prophet in the Bible? Yeah, very small. Uh, I believe three chapters. Yes, yeah, three chapters. Um, it's right before Haggai. Oh, where's Haggai? No, I'm just joking with you all. Okay, so Zephaniah chapter 3, beginning with verse 5. Well, I'm going to actually begin at the beginning. It's labeled Jerusalem, and it's talking about oppressors and rebellious and defiled people and officials who are like roaring lions and priests who do violence to the law. And then we get to verse 5. I mean, just treacherous people in Jerusalem at this time. The Lord within her is righteous. So the Lord is there in Jerusalem. He does no wrong. He's holy. Morning by morning, he dispenses his justice. And every new day, he does not fail. So even though they're treacherous and awful people, the Lord is still there. And I love this part. Yet the unrighteous know no shame. Whoa. Now let's talk about that one for a minute. The unrighteous know no shame. If we go back to... Genesis chapter 3. Um, Adam and Eve have just eaten from the fruit of the tree of knowledge, which God said don't do. And they're hiding from God, trying to hide from God. You can't hide from God. And they've made fig leaves to cover themselves because they realize they're naked. And God says, where are you? They're hiding in their shame. They know that they've done something wrong, and they're trying to hide from God. Now tell me, have you ever done that? No, don't be dishonest with me. Have you ever hidden from God because of your shame? Oh, absolutely we have. Now, I'm not saying it's the right thing to do. It's actually very much the wrong thing to do. Just fess up and tell God, hey, look, I messed up. But a lot of times we try to hide in our shame. But here it says, the unrighteous know no shame. K-N-O-W-N-O, shame. They know no shame. Means that they're not even trying to hide from what they're doing wrong. They don't even care what they're doing wrong. They just have no regard at all for God and his commands and his law. None. They're doing whatever they darn well please. Wow. And then if we go on, it says, I have destroyed nations. Their strongholds are demolished. I have left their streets deserted with no one passing through. Their cities are laid waste and they are, des they are deserted and empty. God did that. And they all knew that God did that. And then verse 7 says, Of Jerusalem I thought, Surely you will fear me and accept correction. Then her place of refuge would not be destroyed, nor all my punishments come upon her. But they were still eager to act corruptly in all they did. Therefore wait for me, declares the Lord, for the day I will stand up to testify. I have decided to assemble the nations to gather kingdoms and to pour out my wrath on them, all my fierce anger. The whole world will be consumed by fire of my jealous anger. Wow. That day is still to come. How can someone truly not fear God? Now, I know people do. So I'm not saying that they don't. I know they do. But I, I guess 
what I'm saying is that I have come so far in my relationship with God that I wonder how it can be done. Now, you might say, oh, Phil, well, you're just blind faith. You just accept because you're trying to save yourself from going to hell. Or, you know, you could throw all kinds of things like that out at me. Don't insult the intelligence that God has given me. I won't insult the intel intelligence God has given you. For example, if you're an atheist, I won't insult you. I appreciate your faith. Atheism is a faith that there is no God. It's still faith. You have no proof that there is no God, just as I have no proof that there is a God. I have evidence that there is a God. You have no evidence that there is no God. It's simply a belief. So the difference is I have faith plus evidence to back up my faith, whereas an atheist has no evidence to back up their faith. So anyway, um, but no, what I'm saying is don't let someone insult your intelligence that God has given you by saying that there is, that you just blindly believe because we all have doubts. We all work through these doubts with the Lord. We ask questions of God. But when we have no shame and we just act according to our natural desires, which are very sinful, wow, I just am blown away by how someone can do that. It really takes a very corrupted mind and soul. And I don't blame these people for this corruption. We live in a fallen world. We live in a world controlled by the prince of the power of the air and his minions who can corrupt us very easily. I don't blame them. I have sorrow for them who act so corruptly that they have no shame. Wow. And I, I feel for God, for his creation has turned against him in such a way. But anyway, the whole point of this today was a bit of a Bible study, but also to just encourage you to, you know, it's okay to question God. It's okay because it will build your faith. But don't hide from him and admit to him when you make mistakes because that also builds our faith because you'll feel, you'll see, you'll hear. However you interact with the Lord, you'll know that his love is greater than your shame. His love is greater than your shame. Turn to him, confess to him, let him heal you. That's your Bible time for today. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you again all real soon. God bless. Thank you.